A luxury sports sedan is supposed to be many things. Comfortable, quiet, and of course, fast. So, well, we can at least do the first test right here. Good launch. A little bit of rear wheel drive by, so you got a little bit of wheel spin there. But we can still rip it down here. It is all wheel drive, of course. This is the Obey Tailgater S. And the old Tailgater was fine, it wasn't great. But this thing, it's a lot faster now. It's a lot faster now. Oh my god. And, unlike the original, which had not too much power and a lot of grip, this thing has a lot more power and a lot more grip, but it's more playful, kind of. It's still a bit of a faff getting this thing around here. It's not the easiest thing to slide. You really gotta be careful with it. It's a bit of a chore, but it is a rewarding chore once you get it right. You can absolutely and very smoothly chuck this thing about. I'm not going to beat around the bush. This is a very fun four-door sedan. It's not quite as good as the Jaguar. It's not quite as fast. Nor, nor does it have the same raw anger of that V8 sedan. However, it is still pretty good. But if you want to test the ultimate luxury sports sedan, chances are you're not going to do it on an airfield. Because, well, a rich businessman is never going to go to an airfield apart to visit his plane. Which is why we're racing it against this. Our resident Special Forces Ninja Man has gone very fancy, and he's going to use all the tools at his disposal to go from the pier all the way to a play at the amphitheater faster than my car. The only difference is he's not allowed to drive. Rather, he has to use all of the rich person tools he has at his disposal to come out on top. Well, let's not beat around the bush, and uh, we're trying to get a sneaky head start. And with that, the race was off. It was a pretty simple cruise through the city for me, and for him, well, it meant a lot of very expensive vehicles to hop in between. Go, 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 Oh. Ah, yeah. Uh, I, I can't speed down here. Um, there's people. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm supposed to be accelerating away here. And I'm just sort of cruising at 10. Ugh, why would you jump towards me? Look out. But then, I cleared the pier and got my foot down. Use the acceleration, use the acceleration. For about five seconds. And then I ran into the joys of everyday commuting. Something which my rich person friend did not have to deal with. He also didn't have to deal with speed bumps, or stoplights, or other traffic. No, rather he was in a Lampadati Toro heading from his boat to the helipad. Now the Toro is a one and a half million dollar speed boat with a few Lampadati V12 thrown into it, so it is no slouch, and he made rapid pace from his fancy six million dollar yacht to his almost equally expensive one and a half million dollar helicopter. Quite frankly, you do get quite a bit of bang for your buck when it comes to this helicopter. This is a Buckingham Swift Carbon. It takes the ordinary fancy schmancy helicopter that they give you, but it's a bit more fancy because it's lighter, it's faster, and it's more comfortable on the interior. Because they use all that carbon fiber lightweight stuff to make the interior heavier, i.e. more comfortable. Got champagne. It also is does not have to abide by any of the traffic laws that my car has to, which means, well, yes, he was slower in the boat compared to my car, he can rapidly make up the time by just flying over the city that I had to drive through. But I had a sneaky strategy called the freeway, 
Yeah, yeah, I know, the city is a bit of a mess. However, if I just go down this freeway at acceptable freeway speeds, I can absolutely blitz through here almost as fast as that helicopter. Because helicopter has to be able to not run into buildings. I just have to not run into cars, and I'd rather be able to avoid cars and build. It's over there. I was monologuing, and it, I, I, I drove past it. Well, I guess we're going to have to make up some time. As I was missing my quarter, the helicopter was making swift progress all the way to his landing zone at the casino. This actually does have a decent amount of grip going through these corners, and that is with a vehicle that is still pretty comfortable on the suspension part. I cannot complain about this as a daily driving sports and it seems to be ticking all the boxes so far. But would it tick the box to win? And I'll be honest, it didn't look it, because he was getting into his final vehicle. The armored Cognicetti 55, a staple of any luxury organization. Powerful, rear-wheel drive, bulletproof, bomb-proof, four-door sedan, perfect for the streets of Los Santos. Me? Well, I was still reeling from my mistake, and that meant that with his rich people driving rules about not taking the street lights or the rules of the road because he's rich, I was on the back foot and desperately trying to make up for my mistake. Oh, come on! Come on, come on, come on! I, I, this is the last corner. I need to just go through here. Alright, this is a closed road, and I can just floor it. We're gonna use a bit of speed here, gotta make up some time. I don't know where he is, I haven't seen him. Now we're gonna go through here, just blitz it, blitz it! Power! We got a little bit of a bump coming up. Ugh! <sighs> Alright, that one's actually dealing with it surprisingly well! Whoa! We don't have time to park it, we'll park it later, chuck it in! Yeah, go, 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 go! We'll, we'll deal with the ticket, it's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Climb. Uh, hey! I think we made it! Uh, oh. Well, that's just mean. Now I know what that feels like. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. The Tailgater S is not perfect. It's too expensive for what it is, in all honesty, but I think it looks great, it drives really nicely, has a lot of customization, and if you want a sports sedan, this is a solid entry.